have uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. But even if I'm being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. So it's funny, God, <clears throat> God Paul, Paul is telling the Philippian church to do everything without complaining or arguing so that they may become blameless and pure. Yeah. Jesus did not, uh, he didn't go running around arguing with people. He wasn't complaining. And that's what we need to strive to be like. Verse 14 and 15 is, is about having, having a proper witness. Probably. You mentioned, you mentioned having joy, you know, but doing things without grumbling and complaining so that you'll prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent children of God above reproach. So someone who's above reproach, you, you would look at their life and, and say, you know what, when I look at his life, um, I, I don't see, um, I see somebody who is living a life and, and a lifestyle um, after Christ. That's what it means to be above reproach. And it says in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, I think yours said depraved. So perverse, depraved, um, yeah, depraved, depraved means, a, you know, a depraved mind is one that doesn't function anymore. Yeah. And I'm sure perverse probably, you know, means close to the same thing. Yeah. Um, and it says, um, among whom you appear as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life. So th those are about having a proper witness. So it's likely that, that it was reported to Paul that, that certain people in the church at Philippi were gr grumbling and disputing. And it was probably hurting their witness. Because people were probably looking at them and saying, look at these, look at these Christians. They grumble and complain just like we do. See? <laughs> so. Do you remember um, uh, we read King David for Psalms 101? We started off and I said, be careful to live a blameless life. And, and uh, King David is, is careful to live a blameless life. And so how do we, how do we, how, how can we be careful? So then you go back to, now, now we go to Philippians 2.14. We're careful by not complaining and arguing. Verse 15 says, NLT version, so that no one can criticize you. Right. So you want to be blameless by not arguing and complaining. So we look at King David and he says, you know, I'm careful to live a blameless life. Well, how are you careful? Because I don't argue and I don't complain. And that should, that should be, you know, our goal. To live a life of, of not complaining and not arguing. Why? So that no one will criticize us. So that we can live clean, innocent lives as children of God. We need to shine bright. You know, yes. when, when we complain and we argue, then we're not shining bright. Yes, Stopping that behavior is something to me that is um, that is one of the proofs of the fruit of the spirit mm -hmm. in a person. If you used to do that after you're born again, um, you shouldn't do that anymore. And I know um, I used to battle with people on Facebook about political stuff. Uh, you know, I was sure I was right, you know, and just all kinds of different stuff. But to quote, um, King Solomon at the end of the day it was meaning it just didn't it right it just didn't mean anything mm -hmm. so if I you know like I've said if I, I could convince somebody to to see my point of view or if we're both still unbelievers who cares great now you now you think the way I think wonderful mm -hmm. we're still both going to hell so yeah. you know um, but I I saw a lot of people on Facebook and even people that I met um, around the time I met you that probably are still doing it, you know, where they're claiming Christ, but yet you see them 
debating and and fighting with people on Facebook. But these are people who confess Christ. So I don't know. And you have the apostles saying, hey, don't do it. So. Yes. In chapter two, mostly is talk about the Christology, right? About Christ. Firstly, that verse one to four is we see that about unity. How we have to unity as we are Christian. And then second part, you will see that how Christ humiliation, you see, we have to learn the example, the life of Christ. And then in verse above that, some 14 to 18, we see that do all without complaining and disputing. <laughs> don't, don't, as we are Christian, because of he just uh, give his life example, even though he was imprisoned, yes. he is not complaining everything. Mm -hmm. Because he always rejoiced. That's why you right. see there are three verses like 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. See, five verses. Every verse we see about what rejoice, rejoicing we see. Mm -hmm. Every verse is to rejoice. Amen. And then in the life of Apostle Paul, when he preached the gospel, he all he is totally rejoiced right. if mm -hmm. he's like. Yes, right. Don't sorry, do all things without complaining and disputing. In the last verse 18, we see, for the same reason you also be glad and rejoice with me, not other. Right. Arguing. I mean, arguing is uh comes from pride. You you thinking that you're right. Somebody, somebody comes at you with a car or something, uh, cuts you off. The first thing you want to do is slam a horn on them. Yep. You know, people, yes. people, <laughs> people with the gen with the Holy Spirit react gently and. Yes, that's right. That accusing does come from the pride only. Yes, that's right. Brother Thang makes a great point about, about the Apostle Paul. You know, he's in prison when he's writing this. Uh, and he's not complaining. And then, not only that, he's rejoicing. And only someone with the Holy Spirit can do something like this. Right. You know, what did Brother Lauren's daughter say? Only a lunatic would do something like this. Yep. If someone with the Holy Spirit would not complain and would rejoice while in prison. That's an example for all the rest of us to, to imitate. He says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Christ did the same thing. He did not complain. You know, he, he, he did not fight back. And so that's what this, this is teaching us here, you know, to, to imitate them. Here they are. Here he is in prison, and he's not complaining. He's not arguing. And now um, going back to verse 17 and stuff, listen to the NLT version. He says, I will rejoice even if I lose my life. Pouring it out, pouring out his life, like a liquid offering to God. Just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. So he has a joy. He's like, he's, he's, he's like I'm, willing to, I'm willing to rejoice even if I lose my life. And I pour out my life like liquid offering to God. Just the same way your your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share in my joy. And he says, verse 18, yes, you should rejoice, and I will share with your joy. Oh, I see. Yes. Easier to understand. Yep. Yeah. Yes, in verse 17, yes. Um, yes, and if I being poured out as a dream offering on sacrifice, in service of your faith. That means the Christian attitudes of Christian living. Right? Mm -hmm. And then I am glad and rejoice with you all. I rejoice. That means to say, even they are not in prison, the Philippian believer, right? They are not in prison. They are in outside of prison. Right? They even if they even though they have uh, how to say they are living. Right, a freely or how they live, just keep right. Even if you are very happy, even though you are good, right, the same. 
I'm happy with you. Mm-hmm. Even I present also, I'm happy with you. The way he is uh, uh, talking that in verse 17, see. Yes, if I am being poured out at a drink offering or sacrifice and service of your faith, right? First point is he's talking about their faith. Because they are not in prison, how they are trapped in their faith in Christ. But Paul, he knows already the way they are faith. Because of uh, he knew that uh, about there some new also how the living standard in the Christian faith he knows because he always contact with uh, someone also the Philippians chapter four verse eighteen you will see that uh, if a drop did us all he is the one who uh, always contact with Apostle Paul. He hear about the face of Philippian church. As you were happy, as you were very enjoying in your life, even I was in prison also, the same with you, I'm very enjoying. I'm very happy. The same that talk about in the verse 17. There's so in verse 18, the way conclusion is, for the same reason, you also be glad and enjoy with me. Uh, one thing is right, if I'm the place of possible, what I will think about that one, <laughs> no easy. Right. Well, and we, uh, you know, as, as believers, as men who have been born again, we understand the joy, you know, mm-hmm. of the Holy Spirit. They, they can only come from the Holy Spirit. Yes. And you think about, be, think about before you were a believer, and the things that made you happy and the things that brought you joy, it doesn't compare with what God's spirit has, has done to you, you know, mm-hmm. um, and think about, think about verse 14. So the nat or, or I'm sorry, in, uh, in first Corinthians two fourteen. So you think about the apostle Paul being in prison in a cold, dark place. He was probably beaten. Who knows if he had clothes or not? We don't know. Um, but we, we understand how, how that could be done. Any one of us could be in prison and we could rejoice if it was for a righteous reason. We, we, could, we could rejoice um, because we have the Holy Spirit. Yes. But if we, if we didn't, 1 Corinthians uh, 2.14 says, but a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness to him and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised or discerned. But he who is spiritual... That's us appraises or discerns all things Yet he himself is appraised by no one. And so that means you can understand you remember, you probably remember your life before Christ, the way you thought, the way you felt, hopefully that you're, it's getting harder and harder and that's and praise God for that, you know? Um, But you, you can, you can understand both. Right. Whereas the, the unbeliever can only see things from the flesh. King David said, Oh, the joys of those whose sins are forgiven. Yes. Yeah. You think Paul is rejoicing? His sins were forgiven. And this one we see that the book of Romans, chapter four, also, right? Well, Ooh, the Apostle Paul agreed so much. Right. Yeah, he agreed so much. He repeated it. Yeah, mm-hmm. repeated in Romans chapter 4. Because he agreed, he took the life of ex- example of Abraham and King David uh-huh. in Romans chapter 4. <laughs> yes, verse 7. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven. Yes. Whose sins are covered. NLT version says, What joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven and whose sins are put out of sight. Mm. Oh, yeah. Paul understands. We understand. Well, and I, I like verse six also because it says, Just as David also speaks of the blessings yes. on the man to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. So even, even David knew that it was grace. Yes. That it was that it was always grace through faith. Abraham knew it, but to see that yes. David knew it is, you know, good, yeah. 
Yes, right. 